Everyone has a story to tell. Mine began 1973 in Tehran. I was born, and my mother's name is Sedige. She left me in an orphanage, Lioness Sun, in Tehran, of Fardiba Pahlavi Foundation's orphanage in the center of the city in Tehran. My mother and father was married and had three children, all daughters, Faranos, Leila, and I. You can see a picture here when the family has a picnic with their new father and their half-brother. And my sister and brother, my half-brother Matty, sitting in his father's lap. When this picture is taken, I still live in the orphanage. I was living there for four years, and it was my home. We were hundreds of children who were living there. I got adopted of two Swedish parents who couldn't get own children. They were living outside Stockholm in Lidingö, and they adopted two children. This is a picture of me of my first midsummer. I was happy. I was living in Sweden. I had a own room, a lot of toys and friends, and I grew up. But my dream was that I really wanted to go back to my home in Tehran and looking for my mother. I was dreaming about her and I was fantasy that she was a Persian princess and one day she would come and actually take care of me. I was dreaming that she was living outside the orphanage in a jungle with big black cats with green eyes. It was something for me because I was actually missing her very, very much. When I was 19 years old, I got diagnosed of cancer. And I had sarcoma syndrome. It's a tissue of a, like a skelet cancer. I was, had chemotherapy and an operation, and I was living in Karolinska Hospital for one year. It was a very, very difficult time for me, and I was sometimes wanted to give up my life. But when I was laying there with my tubes and skinny bones and no hair, I decided that one day, if I survive this, I will go back to my roots and find my mother. And I did. 1999, I found her by ad in a newspaper. You can see the ad in a newspaper. It's from Tehran. It's a picture of me in the orphanage and also a picture of my mother when she's 25 years old that we found in the archive in the orphanage. It's an ID card in the middle where they have my name and what I was drinking and if I had any allergic. That's we put in the ad and we found a family in Tehran. My mother lives in the south part of the slum in Eslam Shar in Tehran with my sister and brothers. I was very afraid to go back to Tehran and meet my mother. We didn't share any memories, no connection, and I didn't know her. She was a stranger, but I have missed her for a long time. Here is a picture when I went back. I went back and saw her, and when I used my camera, it was like to protect, to not come too close to her. So I was actually hiding myself to come too close to my mother behind the camera. But the camera doesn't have any filters. Filters, we can actually close our, but when you feel something very, very close, everything captured in the picture. So the pictures was a way for me to work my relation with my mother. The first trip was really difficult and I really missed to go back to Stockholm. I had my friends, my family, the security, and I felt like a stranger in Tehran. It was a lot of conflict and, you know, I was very Swedish in a way. But when I went back to Sweden, I felt sad because I really wanted to help her and I felt like I had had a better life than what my sisters and my brother have had. I was waiting for four years 
And when I was finished photojournalist, I decided to go back and make a project called Roots, an exhibition. That I went back and documented the whole family. I took actually a picture of the daily life of the women in the family and focused on my sister and my mother. And we came closer, but it took time to go back and forth for many years before we actually got a strong relation between the daughter and the mother. I was always thinking what it was my purpose of this trip and what is actually important when you go to this kind of uh, relation with the family and the camera and it's very very strong and it's you know nothing is black and white and they have gray scales. For me, I learned th some things on the trips, and one thing was to be true to yourself. If you can be true to yourself with the camera and be present and take and actually catch the captions where you see these people that is around you will feel it and they will open the door for you to actually document the world. Secondly, <clears throat> forgive yourself, Maya Angelou said, forgive yourself to not knowing what you didn't know before you learn it. I think the best apology in life is to give yourself a chance and a perspective to try and not give up and don't feel afraid to actually make the mistakes because it's the mistakes that you're going to get to be a master and if you try and you focus you will go going to go get anywhere you want with any story but you have to actually try. The third lesson is to dare to share, and that's a very, very important lesson for me. I found that in my last exhibition, Fading Stories, it's about portraits of testimonies of death, grief, love, but also about the war and family who actually have divided. Here we have a picture of Emily Schroot, one of the holy survivors and a very strong image of a man who tell me about his story and today is 97 years old and I work always with the lead light and a middle format camera but I always talk the speech when it's very important when you build up a portrait that you actually have the talk and then you bring the people in front of the camera and they have to know that you are interesting about their story. You have to be the presence because if you shut off and you are somewhere else, they will know. Many of these people have shown in the exhibition everything. They have lost everything during their life. They lost their home, their family and their Jewish identity. But despite of all these people, they stand up and they don't feel hate. And they are actually role models for us all to tell the story of what it was gone. And they actually stand up and they're still alive and they have actually share like strong moments to be a person who feel fear and death and love and also to be human and that makes my work and the life I do with the stories make what I love about to tell stories. This is Piotr and he is uh, born in Poland and he was an orphanage for many years and was away from his father and mother for many many years and lived alone in a different Orphanage and hear these stories of these people and what they have actually go through uh, and they have this kind and strong heart that makes me to learn very much. I think it's important to decide what for kind of stories we want to tell, really want to tell and actually ask ourselves who am I and what is my purpose and what do I want to actually tell. It doesn't have to be that you overthink things and it will happen and worry about it because it will happen. Relax and the pictures will come to you. They can teach us what is meant to be but also it's to be human and how we can actually relate to ourselves and the people around us. For me photography and stories is very much about to reflect 
who am I and what do I want to actually give to to everyone else around me.